Murfreesboro and Rutherford County are so rich in their respective histories with many women who've had integral roles in creating our community's sense of place. The Rutherford Arts Alliance is proud to partner with Murfreesboro City TV to showcase a number of these women as a part of our Leading Ladies of Rutherford County History project. From murals to our community-involved play, A Party of Twelve by Mary Donay Johnson, we're proud to honor these diverse women of our past who inspire us as we give them a voice in today's world. Let's find out more about one of these leading ladies. Emma Roberts was a legend in education. She was the first African-American principal in Murfreesboro City Schools and the first African-American educator to be elected to the Tennessee Teachers Hall of Fame. She was also a role model to so many that would follow in her footsteps. I am so glad to have you here with us today here at Bradley Academy Museum. And I'm looking forward to you to tell me what you know about uh, Miss Roberts. I've heard a lot of good things about her, and uh, but I never have really worked under her leadership, but I know she has been here in Rutherford County. She's done a lot of good works. So I would just like to know from your point of view, what can you tell us about uh, Miss Rogers? She was such a, a personal influence in my life and professionally uh, just helped me to move forward. I actually uh, met Miss Roberts about 1973 okay. and uh, a principal that had interviewed me, Mr. Crowder, over at Mitchell Nielsen Elementary School, mm -hmm. told me that I simply must meet Miss Emma Roberts. And I'd actually never really heard much about Miss Roberts before. So at any rate, I was then in an interview with Mr. Baxter Hobgood, who was the superintendent of the uh, Murfreesboro City Schools. Okay. And I talked with him. He sent me to talk with Ms. Roberts. Now, everybody knows that Ms. Roberts was principal of Bradley uh, School, elementary school. Okay. And when she left Bradley during um, integration, she went to Murfreesboro City Schools in an administrative role, another administrative role. She was civil rights coordinator and uh, I think director of pupil services, something like that. And uh, at any rate, he advised that I have to talk to her. So I did, had a nice conversation with her, did not know it was an interview, oh, okay. but later realized that it was indeed an interview. And uh, Mr. Hobgood said that um, he was hiring me, but only at Ms. Roberts' approval. Wow. So that's how I got my first job back in about 1973. Okay, when you said the Bradley, are you talking about, you're not talking about this Bradley, you're no, talking about the one? Bradley ele Elementary. Elementary, mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Um, so we were at the Critchlow Cox buildings. I, they, don't, they don't even exist anymore. It's where the health department is now. Mm -hmm. um, but those buildings were city school administrative buildings. Right. And that's where Ms. Roberts' office was. And so she became principal again, but oh, okay. just for these four kindergarten classrooms. Okay. And two of us worked, two of us kindergarten teachers who were t hired worked together in Critchlow. The other two worked over in the Cox Building. And we were waiting on new classrooms to be built, inaugural classrooms to be built in the Murfreesboro City School buildings. Oh, okay. So Ms. Roberts had a big say in where each of the four of us would go, mm -hmm. and um, she put me with my colleague and over to uh, Mitchell Nielsen Primary School. Mm -hmm. And I, I often wondered why she put we, me with Ms. Bertha Snowden. Uh, it, because it was kind of, our relationship was kind of interesting and we became very, very good friends oh, too. Okay. But um, it was really interesting and then after I'd been there for about five years I said, oh, okay, so Ms. Roberts was smart, smarter than I am to put me over here with Ms. Uh, Ms. Snowden. So that's how I ended up over at that particular school. Okay, so at that point they did not have kindergarten uh, on a regular basis in the school system. So you all really started the uh, kindergarten yes. 
within the re uh, regular school, schools, schools, the school yes. system. Yes, oh, okay. there was one kindergarten at Bradley Academy or Bra excuse me, Bradley Elementary School, but that kindergarten was funded by some grant, oh, and it was okay. the only one in the city schools. In fact, the county schools didn't have any at that point. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that was about that was about 1973 for me. It was probably earlier 70 or maybe even before that when they had that uh, grant kindergarten. You're uh, informing me some things that I uh, didn't know yeah. as far as uh, education, as far as the kindergarten classes and her role that Miss Roberts played mm -hmm. here in the school system. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Miss, uh, she was. Uh, the kind of lady, and you've met Ms. Roberts. Oh yeah, I've yeah. met okay. her. She was concerned about all of our development, professional development, personal development, mm -hmm. um, but she wasn't the kind that would butt in. She would just kind of give you advice, and you would be the, the person who would go to her and she could kind of share with you without telling you what to do. Oh, That's okay. kind of how she operated with us. And um, but she was a she was a grand lady. I think you probably remember that. I mean, mm -hmm. she was she was very articulate, um, very um, just very concerned about how she appeared mm -hmm. uh, before people, how she presented herself, and she wanted us all to to be like that. And so some of that rubbed off on us. Mm -hmm. um, she had very high standards too. And she expected certain things of her friends, mm. and even people who weren't her friends. She had wow. certain high expectations for them as well. Yeah. And I don't know if you'd ever experienced any of, of, uh, of that with her. No, I, yeah. I like I said, I really, uh, I've met her a few times, but never under that type of situation yeah. where I would, you know, yeah. know her to that extent. Yeah. But I'm sure with that being said, that made you all respect her as who she was. And like you said, it was an influence on you. So you were able to carry on those same mm -hmm. uh, aspects as you moved up in your career. That's exactly right. And that's how I was able to move, I think. In many instances, um, she was not the kind of person who would accept, accept excuses. Okay. for any kind of behavior or mm -hmm. responses, you were responsible and so you had to make amends for whatever mm -hmm. that was. But I mean, we just, we loved her because well, we knew she cared about us. Yeah, and too, and you know, we reflected not only you, but the students too, you That's know, right. made the environment where it was conducive to learning. That's right. And, uh, and for the students to have respect for you and you to have respect for them, as well as respecting her for you knowing how she was. Right. and. It went so far as for me and Ms. Roberts, she really became part of our family. And she really became one of our children's grandmothers. Oh, and it okay. went so deep as she was always concerned about where our children were going to school. And this was in public school, but more in college. Oh, so okay. we had to convince her that it was okay for Rob to go away to Tennessee Tech <laughs> because it was the best school in Tennessee for engineers. Oh, okay. Now, she never really accepted the fact that Tara went to MTSU instead of New York University. Oh. Because she was an alumnus that was one of her schools, oh, was in okay. NYU, and so she never forgave us for that. <laughs> so uh, she did have high standards in certain other ways as well for our family, not, yeah. only, not only for professional, professionals as, as professionals. Um, she, she was, I would describe her as patient mm -hmm. and giving and kind but she re commanded respect. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, she didn't have to say anything. She could just walk in a room and she just commanded respect. I remember her having lots of visitors who were former uh, students of hers, former colleagues who'd moved away. Uh, they would come back to visit her mm -hmm. when she'd retired. And um, it was just, she was just a glory uh, to be around. Well, Learned so much, and, and she was, you know, she was just that kind of person. Uh, she supported me throughout my career, and we worked together all through my promotion. She was very excited when I became dean, and oh, okay. she would share um, uh, all kinds of activities with me. We would go for recognitions and honors, and we would both share each other's sort of adventures and, oh, okay. and uh, activities and that sort of thing. So, so she didn't hold she, it against you when you went to tech and uh, started teaching? No. <laughs> okay. No. She got over that. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. She, she just, she formed the relationships she established 
as a professional, as a, as a person, um, just grew so deep. The roots were just so deep. Um, and some of her major alliances, though, went back to her uh, garden club. And I can't remember the name of it, but her garden club, yeah. uh, the alliance with her church, where she was an usher at mm -hmm. one time even, but even more so with her family. Yeah. And her family, she's from Houston, Texas. Oh, okay. And so, you know, they would always come to visit and she would go visit them. Yeah, and that, uh, you were talking about that club. I have a book that was given to me to the African American Hair Society. I don't know if I have it with me today, but uh, I was looking at it last night, uh -huh. and uh, she's in the clubs. They have, a, it's talking about the different mm -hmm. clubs in Ruth, Rutherford County, mm -hmm. and she's in there. Well, it was very important to her. Oh, okay. So, I just, just to end is, uh, Ms. Roberts was my boss, but even more than that, she just, she became my forever best friend. Oh, One of well, my forever great. best friends. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I just appreciate being able to share just a few things about her. And I appreciate you doing this because like I said I've heard a lot about her but I just really uh, did not know her mm -hmm. and I talked to some of her family members and I think they live in Texas. They do. And they thought a lot of their aunt as mm -hmm. well. And, uh, and you know I think uh, I don't think she had any children of her own. That's right. So uh, the people, the children that she worked with and, and the ones that she mentored mm -hmm. became her children mm -hmm. and, uh, and everything. That's so, it. And grandchildren? Grandchildren. And now great-grandchildren. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, well, I appreciate you sharing this with us. And the pictures you have here, uh, of course, that's her there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's her speaking. Was this at her retirement? Uh, that was at... Uh, uh, an award that I had received at MTSU. Oh, and okay. she was there. Like I said, she became part of our family. Okay. So uh, that's where that had taken place. And I see, is this is the same uh, up at the top with yes. your family with uh -huh. her? Uh huh. Okay. Yes. Right. Yeah. Very good. I feel like I know her personally now, good. you know. For more information about our project, Leading Ladies of Rutherford County History, visit our website, leadingladiesrutherford.com. Or if you have a story of someone from the past who inspired you, you can share it on our website. For more information about the Rutherford Arts Alliance and what we're doing to promote arts, culture, and heritage, visit rutherfordartsalliance.org. And thank you for watching. Thank you.